All right, good afternoon. Um, we're going to do a little bit of work over break. For the people paying attention, can get ahead. <coughs> I'm also using a new mic on this. This is my first time trying it, so if I'm too quiet, um, I'm not going to change, so turn your sound up. Okay, do that now. All right. So what we looked at before we left was uh, how to solve more than one equation. We call these systems of equations. And that's just anything more than one. So this could have two equations, it could have ten equations. So anything more than one becomes a system. So we look for what is the point, what are our values of x and y that will make both of these statements true at the same time. And we talked about how there's either going to be one solution or there will be zero solutions in case they are parallel. Or if they're the same exact line, these would turn out to be uh, an infinite number of solutions. Hopefully that's not the case here. So when we get back, we're going to get with the calculators. We're going to see how to do this pretty uh, cheaply uh, by using technology. But for today, let's see how we can use a little bit of math to solve this. So what we're going to say is we already have one of them set up for us. And actually, let's see, we're going to solve this with substitution. All right? So we have this equation, y equals x plus 5. So we know in our system of equations that any time we see y, we can say that is equal to x plus 5. Now what we can do with that fact is we can go to our second equation here, and take this y and say, well, this is the same as this y, so why not make this equal to x plus 5? So we're going to rewrite our second equation here, and we're going to call this, we're going to say this is 4x plus this value of y. We're going to say x plus 5 equals 20. Now, the whole reason we do this is because when we look at one equation with two variables, it's impossible for us to solve that. You can only solve for one variable per equation. So when we put y and x, we can't really do anything with that. But if we were to substitute this y for the value of x plus 5, our new equation here only has x's in it. And we can solve that, no big deal. So we do that. So we combine our like terms. We say 4x plus x, well, that's 5x plus 5 equals 20. Now we solve this, no big deal. We've been doing this since the first couple weeks. So we try to isolate x, so we move everything away from it. So we subtract 5 from both sides. We get 5x is equal to 15. We can then divide x or 5x by 5, 15 by 5, and we get x equals 3. So we're halfway there. We know that x equals 3. But we still need to know, well, what's y? And usually, by this point, it becomes pretty simple. We can say, well, if I know x is 3, that means any time I see a 3, I can substitute it in one of my equations. Well, I've got this equation here. It says y is x plus 5. So I can say this is going to be y equals, and I know x is 3, so I'm just going to say instead of x, 3 plus 5. And now it just comes a matter of saying, well, what's 3 plus 5? That's, that's just 8. So now we have this ordered pair. We have 3 and we have 8. And we can try that out. We already saw that if x is 3, that 3 plus 5 does indeed equal 8. Okay, good. But we should also be able to say, well, if this x is 3 and this is 8, then this statement should be true as well. Well, 4 times 3 is 12 plus 8 is 20. Good job. We have an answer. All right? The bigger reason, hopefully somebody's saying, is like, well, what's, what's the point of this? When do we ever need more than one equation? Well, the answer is all the time. So, oh, look, we have this convenient example. We have our family, the Strausses, signed between two lawn care services. They have Green Lawn and Grass Team, both good names. So they both charge different rates. So first one, their charge is a $49 setup fee plus $29 a month. So we can write that as an equation. We can say their cost is equal to $49 flat plus $29 per month. So 
29 times the number of months. You can just say 29 M. Okay, and that is for green. And then we have grass team, which charges $25 for setup plus 37 a month. So we can say their cost is equal to $25 flat plus 37 per month. So again, it's 37 times M. And we want to know how many months will both lawn care services cost the same. So what we're looking for is just like we did, <coughs> excuse me, our previous example is when do these two equations, when do they intersect? So when is our cost and our month going to be the same for both of these equations? Okay. So we look at it. We say, well, I know cost is $49 plus $29 a month. So anytime I see C, I can call it this amount right here. But I also have cost, and it can also equal this amount here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these C's, and I'm going to substitute it with the value of C. And let's see how that's going to work. So let's say, which one do you want to do? Let's say this C we're going to replace with this value, because C equals that. That's what our bottom equation tells us. So we can say 25 plus 37 times M, the months, is equal to, <coughs> and we can keep this right side just the way it was, because that's equal as well. So 49 plus 29 M. And now what we're down to, instead of two equations with two variables, we have one equation that looks a little bit uglier, but it only has one variable. And if it only has one variable, we can solve this with only a slight headache. We can combine our like terms. We can bring all of our m's over here. So if we subtract 29 m's from either side, and that will give us a poorly drawn line. Whoops. 29 m try this again. Alright, slightly better. So we end up with 25 plus 37 minus 29 is just 8. I hope. Hopefully someone's checking my math out there. 49 and then 29m minus 29m, that's just going to cancel out. So this is all I'm left with. We can then combine our constant terms. So we can take 25 away from both sides. <laughs> oh man, I have a tool for this. Hey, okay. It's 25 minus 25, that cancels out. So we have 8m is equal to 49 minus 25, that's just 24. And then again, we're just trying to isolate m, so we divide both sides by 8, and we end up with this m being 3. So what does that mean in terms of our problem here? Well, if M is 3 and M stood for months, that means that 3 months, both of these companies are going to cost the exact same amount. So where they intersect is going to be where they cost the same amount, and that will be at 3 months. And it wants to know what will that cost be? Okay, well, we can do two things once. First, we can check to see if what we did makes any sense, if it works. And second, we can find that cost. So what we're going to do, we're going to erase all this work here. You probably don't need to erase all this work, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> and my line persists. So let's say when m is 3. So we're just going to substitute m in for 3 because we know... Well, we think we know. That's what we that's what we got. We're going to check to see if it's right. We said it. When m is 3, that is, these should be the same. So 25 plus 37 times 3 should equal $49 plus 29 times 3. So let's check that. So 35 times 3, that's 110. That's not 110. I'm sorry. 
That's bad math. That's 105. So 25 plus 105 should equal $49 plus 29 times 3. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. Dude. Why is no one... <laughs> I wrote 37. It's it's right there. And then somehow I got 35 and I'm wondering why my numbers aren't right. Sorry. It's like I'm on vacation or something. Okay, 37 times 3. That's 111. I lost my color. 111 plus 25 equals $49 plus 29 times 3. That's 87. Uh, yeah. All right, we add these together. 25 plus 111 is 136. 49 plus 87 is also 136. So, hooray. If we check any number besides 3, any number in the entire universe, these two will not give us the same answer. 3 is the only number. If you don't believe me, you can try it. I'm not going to because I know it's right. I hope it's right. So 136 is the only number there should be. So what will this cost be? It will be $136. Alright, the family will use the service for only three months. Which is the better option? Okay. So, this sounds separate from question A, but it's totally dependent on question A. And let's look at why. So we look at the difference in our prices. We say, well, how did these end up intersecting in the first place? We look at the differences. If we look, the very first number, this 49 and 25, that's the cost just for the startup fee. So you pay that at zero months. Even if you never got your lawn mode, you pay them 49 or $25. So if you think of it just in terms of that cost, you'd say, well, this, uh, I forgot what the name was, this grass team is totally a better deal because I'm paying less money up front, right? But then we can't just consider that. We have to look at the second amount. And we'll highlight it. This is kind of a big deal right here. This is the cost per month. And if we look, which one's cheaper now? So, well, this one's like $8 less per month. Okay? So if you're paying less per month, you think to yourself, and pause the video, think about this, which one will cost less over time? Let's pause and think about it. Okay? Don't spoil it. I don't think you paused it. Or continuing on anyway. This one's going to be less in the long run. Even though you pay more up front, when you're paying $8 less a month, this this uh, startup fee, it doesn't matter as much in the long run. It's only a difference of $24. And you think, well, what's eight times, what's this $8 difference times three months? It's 24 and that's why at three months, we figured this out, at three months they cost the same because the difference in the monthly charge and the difference in the startup fee, it balances out after three months. So that means after six months, the second company, even though at the very beginning it was cheaper, will end up costing you more. And this is sort of a, it's sort of a big deal. If you ever get into like uh, business, economics, that kind of thing, you look at this stuff all the time and you can see the difference between this fixed cost and this variable cost, how that matters depending on how long you're, you're doing something. So the answer here, which one is the better option? It is option number the first, not this one. All right? If that didn't make sense, that's okay. This is the math part. That's what's important. The logic will get eventually, hopefully. All right, one last thing. The real reason to do this is to get fake points on the internet. <laughs> so, oops. Yeah, let's do that. So, if we have this problem right here on conacademy.org, which hopefully you're all are at, and we get a problem that looks like this, and it says solve for x and y using substitution. It's like, well, I know how to do substitute. Let's let's do this. So, let's copy our problem. And we'll move you away. And let's solve for this. So we have x, we have y. And this one, sort of helpful. 
is that x is already solved for. We know that x is y plus 1. So what that means is we can substitute this pretty simply. This x and this x, we can say, well, in this first equation, this blue one, I can say that this x is equal to y plus 1. So let's do that. Let's say negative 4 times this value of x, which we know is y plus 1 plus, and the rest of this blue equation is just going to say the same, 5y equals negative 9. All right? Now, again, ugly equation, but only one variable. Not a big deal. So we can distribute first. So we say negative 4 times y is just negative 4y. Negative 4 times 1 is just negative 4. Plus 5y equals negative 9. If we combine our like terms, negative 4y plus positive 5y is just 1 positive y. So I'm just going to put y minus 4 equals negative 9. We isolate the y by adding 4 to both sides. And we get y is equal to negative 9 plus 4. Different signs, so we subtract the 2. 9 minus 4 is 5. We keep the sign of the higher number. 9 is a higher value than 4, so this is negative 5. All right? Now, if we know the value of y is negative 5, I can take it back to the second really simple equation and say, well, x is going to be, and I think I have a green color. I can say x is equal to negative 5 plus 1. And negative 5 plus 1, well, that's just negative so let's try it out. So x is negative, or yeah, x negative 4, y is negative 5. Let's try it out. It'll be smaller. Uh, I can't make this be on the screen at the same time. Do, do, do. Hold on. Okay. Negative 4, negative 5. Check it. Correct. Next question. Let's try one more. Uh, that's easy. Give me another one. Can I make it give me another one? No, I said give me another one. All right. Forget it. I'll let you try these on your own. All right. If you have questions, uh, uh, send me a message, I guess. All right. Goodbye.